Jeju Island is South Korea's largest island and a key destination to visit if you're visiting South Korea. In this video, I'm putting together for you a three day travel itinerary video, so let's get to it. Before we start, I highly recommend you rent a car. Jeju Island's kind of annoying to get around without one, so definitely consider this. Also, this itinerary video will be split into three locations, south, west, and east. This means you'll be able to cover as much of the island as possible because the north is the city, and I'll include a few things you can do here as well. Starting off with the east side, you have a few choices here, including the Manjugu Cave, Songsum Peak, Aqua Planet, the Gyeongmyeon Maze Park, as well as other maze parks. If you're into animals and aquariums, the Aqua Planet on Jeju Island is definitely a great visit. It's actually the largest aquarium in South Korea and boasts a ton of cool and unique sea life. I visit a ton of aquariums and I was pretty impressed with this one, so definitely check it out if you have some time. If you prefer actual locations or attractions, I highly recommend checking out at least one of the maze parks. We opted for the Gimyeon Maze Park, which added the added bonus of having 50 plus stray cats in the area if cats are your thing. Otherwise, check out some of the other maze parks, there's some pretty cool ones as well on the list. If you enjoy a bit of more cave exploring or the history of the kind of island, I highly recommend putting the Manjugo Cave in your list. This cave is made up entirely from the lava flows from many many centuries years ago and offers a great and fascinating 60 minute walk where you can kind of guide yourself with the cave and just kind of see how the cave got formed and a bit of a history around that. Finally, if you want to do a small hike or you're a bit of an outside person, the Sunrise Park is a great place to visit. Spend at least 45 to 60 minutes here. It's also where the Sunrise Festival is held at the end of the year to celebrate the new year, which we actually managed to attend. It's a pretty cool thing if you're attending at the end of the year and you're in the new year on Jeju Island, definitely check it out. All right, so second day is your West Day plus a bit of North Day. This is a day where we'll do a few things in the city as well. To start off the day, I would check out the Nexon Museum. The reason why I put this on the west day is because it's slightly to the west of the city, so once you're done with this, you can head straight into the west of Jeju Island. The Nexon Museum is the first computer museum in South Korea, and it's really cool, especially if you're a bit of a game nerd or you love a bit of computers. You can try old arcade games even like Doom, Space Invaders, as well as newer games like Beat Saber. The history is awesome. I really love this museum, so that's why I'm putting this on the list. If you play games like Maple Story and Gumball, you will know what this is. Afterwards, drive west and check out the Ocelot Tea Museum and the Industry Shop. The Ocelot Tea Museum is now built out, so there's a bit more museum stuff now. But the really cool thing about this are the really cool teas you can buy and the desserts you can try at the cafe as well. Also, there's some really unique cosmetics from what I've heard in the Industry Shop. I did check it out, but my partner said there's a bit more stuff there that's more interesting than me. But she said there's a lot of unique Jeju Island cosmetics there. So if that's on your bucket list, then just tick that out. Finally, we did get to check this out, but I actually heard great things about the Spirited Garden. Really cool garden apparently. Definitely check it out. We actually couldn't check it out because it actually was closed when we were there. But I heard it's much better than some of the other things you can do in the West. So put this on your list. Now, drive back into town, and this is the night we'll check out the Jeju Dongmen Night Market. This is a really cool night market where you get a chance to try out these different Jeju Island specialties, including Jeju Island Mandarin Orange type desserts and drinks, black pork, which you can get in restaurants, but you can, do a lot, you can see a lot more variations at the night market. And finally, a lot of seafood related stuff. You can get a lot of crab and lobster there as well, and other Jeju Island specialties. All right, so on your final day, you're gonna do a bit of hiking. In my opinion, Mount Halasan is definitely worth at least half a day of hiking. There are many walks there, and you could do a full day one if you're interested. However, there are some half day ones or a few hour ones, especially if you wanna do more on Jeju Island. Not only is this the highest mountain in South Korea, but houses really unique wildlife, so definitely check it out. We did one in winter, which is a bit hard. However, we definitely thought it was totally worth it. Next up, Check out the Jongbang waterfall. There's actually two waterfalls, but I recommend checking out this one. Um, I just prefer it better. I think it's much better than the other one. And you can check out both if you want. I'll put it um, in the caption here as well. However, I recommend this one if you want to choose one out of two. And finally, just some little extra funny bonus. If you haven't checked out any of the teddy bear museums worldwide, I would just check this one out. It takes maximum 60 minutes. It's kind of funny. Um, I'm, it's not something you really need to do. I would recommend just checking it out if you haven't checked out a teddy bear museum. I personally didn't. Um, so yeah, check this one on Jeju Island. It's still pretty funny. 
basically it's like a history museum but they use teddy bears to kind of represent some of the historical figures across the world kind of my thing maybe it's not your thing either way if it's not you then check out the second waterfall it might be something that you might be interested in if you prefer nature stuff and there you go that's my quick three-day travel itinerary for jeju island leave a comment below what else you want to see what have i missed but i try to pack as much realistically you could pack in three days so hopefully this video helps you out and i'll see you in the next one don't forget to like and subscribe as well cheers